Hello and welcome to a video overview of the new Drumagog 5. We will put Drumagog 5 a little bit through its paces here today and check it out on a couple of different drum parts, take a look at some of the new features, and just see exactly what's going on with the new version. Here we have uh, Logic with uh, a basic little drum track. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a listen uh, just to the raw drums here. This is without any, any without Drumagog running on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're gonna start by using Drumagog on the kick track. So what we need to do is make sure our kick track's highlighted, and then we just go to the insert effects, and we'll find Drumagog uh, down in the audio unit section uh, under the Wave Machine Labs category. So let's go ahead and choose an instance, and go ahead and get it loaded up. And here we have uh, the new Drumagog 5. There's quite a lot of changes here. Uh, the biggest, of course, uh, that you can see is uh, a brand new interface. We're gonna go through some of the different sections now. Um, and the first thing we need to do is uh, take a look at the upper left-hand section. Uh, this is the new file browser. This is a new feature in version five, uh, a bit different from version four. The new file browser allows, uh, allow, allows you to uh, see your entire computer, all your hard drives, all your different folders. So no matter where your samples are, uh, you can access them uh, without having to create a special folder and stick all the samples in one spot. So from here, we can see uh, some, some different choices. Since we're replacing the kick, let's go ahead and choose the DW22 Maple Kick. Um, this is a new, um, new sound uh, that's part of Drumagog 5. We just double click on it to load it, and it goes ahead and, it, and loads that individual um, GOG file up. Just like Drumagog 4, Drumagog 5 has a favorite section. Using this, you can designate specific GOG files as favorites so that even if they're scattered across multiple hard drives, partitions, or folders, you can keep all your favorite files sorted together in one spot. Uh, to add a favorite, simply find the GOG file and right-click on it to bring up the little menu, uh, and we just choose Add to Favorites, and now we just switch over to the Favorites tab, and there's our one favorite that we've designated. Uh, you, so you can designate ones across multiple drives and quickly and easily find, find your favorites. The next important section here is in the bottom left-hand corner. This is the visual triggering window. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start playing back the track, and you'll see uh, the audio from the kick track uh, coming through, and you'll be able to adjust the little sensitivity bar. Um, so here we can see uh, each of those little spikes is an individual kick drum hit and we can adjust the sensitivity level up and down. Uh, what we want is we want all of the hits to be above that line. So if we raise it all the way to the top, it'll stop triggering altogether. Uh, if we bring it down to the bottom, uh, it might start triggering extra notes from the bleed through from the snare or the toms or, or uh, any of the other drums. So uh, it's real simple with the visual triggering window to just drag the sensitivity control uh, somewhere that's below the peaks but above the noise. Uh, so now we have uh, the kick drum playing. Let's go ahead and solo um, that uh, uh, kick track. Let's move our interface out of the way a little bit. Now we can just hear the new sound. The blend control allows us to adjust how much of the new sound versus how much of the original sound there is. If we drag it all the way to the left now, we're just hearing the original track. If we move it all the way to the right, we're just hearing uh, the brand new sound. And let's say um, you want to layer the two sounds together, which is one of the more common uses with, with Drumagog. Uh, we just move it towards the middle here, and now it's stacking both the new sound and uh, uh, right on top of the old sound. Let's just take a listen to that here for a second. Okay, um, while that's playing, uh, if we look up at the top, uh, we see what it, uh, kind of under the hood, what it's doing. Um, we see some samples lighting up. Those are the individual samples that make up this particular GOG file. Um, one of the new features in Drumagog 5 is we can sort these samples. Uh, let's go ahead and change the sorting, and we're gonna change it to uh, sorting it by peak uh, with, the, with the loudest samples at the top. So now you can see, um, uh, all of your individual hits sorted out, and it's real easy to move around and, and edit existing sounds. 
One of the other really big features in, in Drumagog 5 is the new room samples. And if we d look down here at the bottom in the, what looks like a little mixer section, uh, we've got a couple of uh, uh, new options. One fader is labeled OH, that stands for overhead. The other is ST room, which is stereo room. And it means that this particular GOG file has room samples attached to it. Now let's go ahead and put the blend all the way up at 100%, so we're just hearing the new sound. And let's just start bringing in some of the overhead just by dragging that up. And you can hear a little bit more of the room, a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more stereo spread. Uh, both of these are, are stereo uh, rooms. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the, the, the regular room here. Much more drastic. This is this was recorded about 20 feet away from the drum kit, um, and this particular GOG file is part of the Smart Studio collection. Those these are a bunch of drum samples that we recorded in Madison, Wisconsin, at uh, Smart Studio uh, in their great sounding room. So let's go ahead and, and uh, just listen a little bit and, and tweak those room samples just a, just a tad. And because they were both recorded at the same time, it's the same hits, uh, and they'll blend together really, really well. They're not recorded separately or anything like that. So, um, just like, just as, just as if, if uh, you had tracked uh, both the overheads and the stereo rooms um, on a normal multi-track, you can just bring them in and out.